Hi, I'm Clara. And I'm Eliza. For our stats project, we decided to do something related to shopping because it's a shared interest of ours. We chose to investigate the relationship between mall shoppers and their behavior because we wanted to answer questions such as, does gender affect how much you buy and how likely are you to buy something if you came to the mall without an intention to? We wanted to investigate how Americans are influenced while they are shopping and what behaviors are typical while shopping. We hypothesized that there would be multiple strong correlations between the variables we investigated. Some of these include women and people in groups would buy more and the more stores you visit, the more items you will purchase. We found a few pieces of research regarding shopping behaviors that we found interesting and useful. The first one, the shopping mall, a teenage hangout gave us the idea to collect data about whether or not people came to the mall with an intention to buy a particular item or just an intent to hang out. The second study, called A Qualitative Study of Mall Shopping Behaviors of Mature Consumers, suggested other interesting points to collect data on, such as how many stores were visited and how many items purchased. Because we found that there were many factors that contribute to shopping behavior, we wanted to ask these five questions to gather as much information about their habits as possible. We collected our data at the outdoor mall in Skokie, Illinois called Old Orchard. To ensure randomization, we spent an equal amount of time at each of the mall's main exits. The order we went to these exits was determined by using a random number generator for the digits 1 through 4. We then would identify a shopper leaving the mall and would flip a coin. If the coin landed on heads, we would ask them our questions. If tails, then we would not. This helped ensure randomization for all of our tests and helped spread the effect of confounding variables. We collected some data that we thought was interesting when compared, but not necessarily useful in our tests. We discovered that about two-thirds of the people we talked to were women, which wasn't extremely shocking, but still interesting. We then wanted to see what proportion of people went to the mall in a group and what proportion went alone. The green section represents people in a group, the orange represents individuals, and the blue represents families with young kids where we only talked to the parent or parents. The first test that we ran was a linear regression t-test of the relationship between items purchased and number of stores visited. The null hypothesis for this test was that there was no correlation between the two, and the alternative hypothesis was that there is a correlation. We started by making sure our assumptions were all met before continuing. The first is linear. On this graph of the residuals for number of items, we see no clear pattern indicating that the linear approximation is appropriate for this model. Our next assumption is that the data is independent and has a large population size of at least 10 times the sample size. It is safe to say that more than 740 people will go and shop at Old Orchard Mall. Therefore, this condition is also met. The next assumption is that the population has a normal sampling distribution. The normal sampling distribution assumption is met because the histogram of the residuals shows no major skewness or outliers, indication this assumption is appropriate. Our next assumption is that there is equal variance. On the graph of the residuals, they, this indicates that there is equal variance because there are relatively equal distance between points above the 0.0, .0 line as there are below, indicating that the condition for equal variance is met. The final assumption that must be met to run a linear regression t-test is the data must have been collected randomly and, as shown in a previous slide, the way we collected it was. After running the test, we got an output that is shown on the left. From the data, we can see our linear regression line. This shows items is equal to 0.1 plus 0.637 times the number of stores meaning that for every store visited, the average shopper is predicted to purchase 0.637 more items, and that if a shopper visit, visits no stores, they are predicted to buy 0.1 items. In real life, the y-intercept would be zero, but this is a sample, not a full representation of the population. Our p-value is also shown as zero, indicating that we would reject the null that there is no correlation between number of stores visited and number of items purchased because the p-value is so much lower than the alpha value of 
Thus, we can say that there is significant evidence that there is a strong association between number of items purchased and number of stores visited. The R-squared value of 47.3% indicates that 47.3% of the variance in number of items purchased can be accounted for by the least squared regressions line for items versus stores. The second test that we ran was a two-sample t-test and confidence interval for the number of items purchased based on gender. We predicted that women would buy more on average than men. We chose to run this test because when combined with the question answered in method one, we believed it would offer interesting insight on who is most likely to buy items. Randomization again is met for this test because of our sampling method. The large population or independence condition is met because it is reasonable to assume that at least 480 females and 260 males have purchased items at Old Orchard. The final condition of normality was also met because our sample size is greater than the required 30 of the central limit theorem. The test yielded a sample mean of 1.12 items for men and 2.58 items for women. The sample standard deviation, which tells us on average how far away our data was from the mean, was 2.81 for men and 1.56 for women. This is a box plot that was generated from the Minitab t-test. The box plot suggests that there is more skewness in the men's distribution than the women's. However, the women's data has three outlying points while the men had only one. The center for the women's number of items purchased on average is clearly greater than the center of the men's. The women's distribution ha also has a larger spread than the men's. Although there are points that Minitab selected as outliers, we believe that if we were to repeat this test, we could include these points as they are not unreasonable. We ran this t-test and confidence interval with a 95% level of significance and therefore an alpha value of 0.05. The test statistic t was equal to 3.43. This is similar to a z-score for a normal distribution, but for a t-distribution. The larger the value of a test statistic, the more likely that the difference is significant. The test resulted in a p-value of approximately 0.001. This means that there is a 0.1% chance of obtaining a test statistic as large or more extreme than we did. We obtained a confidence interval of 0.72734 to 2.75023. This means that we are 95% confident that the true mean difference in items purchased for females minus males is captured by the interval. The p-value of 0.001 leads us to reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference in mean number of items purchased because it is smaller than the alpha value of 0.05. We can conclude that there is a significant difference in the number of items purchased between women and men. The linear regression t-test showed that there is significant evidence of a strong positive relationship between the number of items purchased and the number of stores visited. This means that the more stores a person visits, we predict they also purchase more items. Both the 95% confidence interval and the t-test support the conclusion that there is a significant difference in the mean number of items purchased by males and females. When combined, both of the methods we used and all of the questions we answered support the hypothesis that women who visit many stores will purchase more items than any other type of person visiting the mall. This research has many real-world wor applications. Because America is such a capitalistic society, consumerism influences shopping behaviors greatly. We discovered through our analysis that women will give you the highest profit margin and you will sell them the greater amount of inventory over men. A few variables that we did not take into account were the difference between an outdoor and an indoor mall. Because we collected data from just one type of mall, there could be different outcomes to our questions. If we were to repeat this process, it would be nice to compare the two types of malls. Like, we totally understand that sometimes math can be so hard. So why not, make sh why not go shopping and make it fun? Bye! Bye!